What's up everyone? My name is Marie. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another speed build. So for today's video, I'm working on an apartment complex in the world of San Sequoia. I actually got started on this build uh, I think the day after the trailer for the For Rent expansion pack came out. So I was very much inspired to build apartments in a world that kind of reminds me of the new one that's coming with the For Rent expansion pack. It's obviously way different, but like in the trailer, you could see a like a beautiful river. There was lots of water and lots of green, and that just kind of gave me the San Sequoia vibe. What is the new world called? I think it's going to be called Tomarang, if I'm not mistaken. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that's the name of the new world. And San Sequoia kind of reminds me of it and from what I've seen so far in the trailer. So I thought it would be fun to build something here in the world of San Sequoia. And I thought it would be fitting to build an apartment complex. And I'm building on a lot in the more like center area of the map where I think by default, there is a library on this lot. If I'm not mistaken, it could be something else, but I I'm pretty sure it's a community lot. So I decided to uh, build a um, an apartment complex here. It's actually a build I've never touched before. I have never built on this lot before, which is crazy. Uh, so I thought it'd be perfect to fill it up with an um, apartment building. And um, so that's what I did. So I was, I was feeling very inspired to build apartments. Also, I hope you're ready for another longer speed build. And I think there's going to be a lot of longer speed builds coming out over the next few weeks, months, may maybe even like up until the pack comes out, of course, because I am feeling very inspired to build all these multi multi unit builds, basically. So apartment complexes, townhouses, duplex homes. And naturally, um, that way I will be ending up with longer speed builds because the builds are a lot bigger and it takes a lot longer to actually furnish them because it's basically twice the amount of furnishing you have to do. I mean, mostly the units are probably going to be a lot smaller than like a regular house would be, of course, but there is always going to be multiple of them to get through. So it's going to be a lot of work and the videos are going to be a lot longer um, versus just, I guess, regular suburban houses or just regular family homes for that matter. So I hope you're ready for longer speed builds. But yes, this one took me a while. I did also build this one over on stream. So that was a lot of fun. And uh, uh, there was a lot of back and forth with this building because I was looking at some sort of an inspiration picture that I found on Pinterest that I really liked, but I was kind of looking at multiple like San Francisco inspired um, apartment complexes. So that's kind of what I was looking at for inspiration and also what got me started. But for the rest, I just kind of came up with this one. Um, I came up with the shape and stuff um, just by myself, not necessarily copying it from something that I found somewhere else. But I do think that the shape of this one actually turned out to be really fun. So uh, I ended up going with a vibe of a renovated building. So in my brain, this building is old, but then the person who bought it like renovated it completely. So all the units are very much modernized and um, you can definitely tell that there are some older elements to the build still. So there's still like some older traditional original details to the build, but the inside of it is most definitely very much renovated. And then the paneling on the outside, for example, is also nicely painted and fresh, but then there is also this older red brick that you can kind of see. Um, so it's an older building, but it's definitely completely renovated and the units are completely redone. So um, this apartment complex ends up having six units total and it also has shared laundry. So we have some shared areas as well. It has a nice shared backyard situation with a swimming pool and a grill and some tables and chairs. It's basically just a shared space downstairs. And then we obviously have some shared laundry, as I said, as well. So we have a couple of laundry machines on the ground floor, and then we have a few laundry machines, I think, on the top floor as well. So the people living on the middle floor basically are going to have to go and see like if they want to do their laundry either upstairs or downstairs, they don't have laundry on their floor. So they have to go to a different floor, which I thought was actually quite fun because it's not always going to be super luxurious. And sometimes maybe it's a little bit difficult to get your laundry done. I thought that was a fun um, little storyline addition to this build. Obviously, you can always get rid of the laundry if you don't if you don't enjoy it or if you want to give the units their own laundry, then that's possible. Of course, 
yours as well. Um, but I thought that that would be a fun, um, a fun little addition to basically the challenge of living in a complex like this. I also ended up putting a basement in this, um, in this build. I did that later on. I don't think I actually recorded the me creating a basement part. I think I did, I did that like off camera. Um, but I did add a basement because with the new expansion pack, uh, there is, from the looks of it, there's going to be some like plumbing appliances and some electricity boxes or something like that um, that you can place in your builds. Maybe that's going to be a mandatory type of object for the lot type. That's definitely something I could see um, being a thing as well. So I thought it would be fun because it's also an older building. I thought it could be fitting to have a basement. Uh, so I did place a basement, but we don't have those appliances yet. So I decided to turn it into a gym. So there is even a small little gym um, included with this build, but of course you could also put the laundry in the basement or you could put like little storage boxes in the basement. That's also a possibility, but I really wanted to make the space more functional. So I decided to uh, turn it into a small gym. So it's actually quite a luxurious building. And I decided to go for a lot of different sizes and floor plans for the apartments. So I feel like the more realistic way to go for buildings like this is that you're going to have basically identical apartments on all the floors. And yes, that would have been fun and realistic. And it's definitely something I still want to do. But for this one, I really wanted to mix it up and do different floor plans for each floor for each apartment. So there is going to be multiple different units for um, different types of households, basically. So what I ended up doing was on the ground floor, we have by far the largest, most luxurious and prettiest apartment. And in my brain, that was um, that's going to be where the landlord will be living for the time being, because for the landlord, I actually kind of thought of the storyline um, for this landlord. I was thinking of them as a young adult and they probably come from a real estate family, like a family that um, maybe one of their parents or both their parents are real estate agents. They know a lot about real estate and they know a lot about renovating and stuff. So um, I was thinking that this landlord's profession is flipping and then selling houses. And so now they took on this project where they basically just bought this very old building that needed to be completely renovated. So it's probably a very expensive project. Um, so they purchased this building and they renovated it completely and they decided that for the time being, they would be living in this apartment complex as well. Um, because it's just most convenient for them at this point. And then maybe they're also at some point probably going to purchase a house and flip it to live in it for themselves. But for now, because this is such a big project, this person decided, you know what, I'll be renovating an apartment for myself as well. And then I'll be living here for a few years um, up until the next project comes along or up until the next dream house comes along. That's kind of what I was imagining. So the uh, ground floor apartment is by far the biggest, the most luxurious and just like the prettiest one. Um, and then the other ones are a bit more generic. I did furnish them all, but one of the apartments, I actually just did filler furniture because there's probably no tenant for that one yet. So it has some really basic filler furniture um, just to take pretty pictures and to give people that come look at the place um, to just give them an idea of what it could look like when they put in their own furniture. There is probably also an option to rent it with the fill filler furniture there. Um, maybe that's a possibility as well. And I thought gameplay wise, that could be a fun unit to get started in if you want to actually play with this building once the pack comes out, because I feel like for now, before the pack comes out, you can obviously play in it, but it would be a little bit difficult to actually make that happen because you're going to have so many Sims living in the different units and they're all gonna be part of one big household. But when the pack comes out, you can actually have different households live in the separate units. And um, this apartment, like I said, already has five units total. And from the looks of it, or from what the Sims team have teased on their socials, you can build up to six units per lot um, without cheats, that is. There was also a little sneak peek or a little, you know, tease about uh, there being cheats. And then you can probably 
create more than six units per lot, but from the looks of it, you can do six units per lot total. And so this building has five, which is actually perfect. Um, so on the ground floor, there's one apartment. On the other two floors, both, um, both those floors have two apartments. So on the second floor, we have one small studio apartment for one sim. You could have two sims living there, but I was really imagining one sim living there. And then there is a small or, well, a slightly bigger, actually two bedroom apartment on the second floor as well. And I furnished that one for a young couple and a toddler. So I was imagining a young couple and a toddler living in that, um, in the second biggest apartment. And then on the top floor, we have another studio apartment, which again, I was imagining for a single sim, maybe a student or something. Um, could also be for two sims, but for those small studio apartments, I was definitely thinking one sim each. Um, and then there is another, I think the unfurnished, quote unquote unfurnished, the filler furniture apartment is on the third floor as well. I am kind of getting lost on this one because it's been a few days since I actually finished this one. And I, in the meantime, of course, already got started on another apartment complex because I can't help myself. I'm just so incredibly excited for the opportunity to be building apartment complexes and I can't help myself. So um, there will be a lot more of those coming to my to my YouTube channel. So I, I hope you're interested in that because I just I'm so excited about it. Um, but here you can see we are getting started on the um, decorating for the apartments. And um, I was really trying to take it down a notch with the clutter because the building has five units and it's already big and quite detailed on the outside. So I was like, you know what, let's try and just take it down a notch with the clutter just for performance purposes for this lot, because I can definitely imagine it being a little bit laggy. It was already a bit laggy, not necessarily laggy, but it was not as smooth as other builds would usually play. Um, on my computer, so I can imagine it being a little bit rough on other computers or laptops as well. Um, so I was really trying to take that into consideration, but of course I am the way that I am and I just can't help myself when it comes to clutter. So it's definitely pretty uh, detailed and, um, and fully decorated, but definitely I really, really tried with the clutter and I feel like I did an all right job. But here we have the, um, the ground floor apartment and like I said, this one is definitely the most luxurious and also um, a little bit more personalized in that sense, because since this is a completely renovated building and all the units basically got renovated at the same time, I did um, the same kitchen stuff for each appliance or each apartment and also the same bathroom item. So the bathrooms are pretty much identical in the sense that they all have the same furniture or plumbing appliances um, and also the same color scheme, but just the layouts are different for each of the apartments. But then for the kitchens, I, um, I use the same kitchen counters and kitchen appliances in each apartment, but just in different swatches because, I mean, realistically, they would probably all be identical. But when it comes to The Sims and when you're decorating all these different units, it's kind of fun to play around with different color schemes, of course. So for the kitchens, I, uh, I use the same kitchen set in each apartment, but just in a slightly different color. And so for this apartment here on the ground floor, I use the black set. Um, as you can probably already tell, I use the kitchen counters or the kitchen sets from the Home Chef Hustle Pack because they're so nice and modern, but yet simple at the same time. And I feel like that's very realistic for apartments. You're probably not going to have very out there, um, detailed kitchens in a very specific style or specific taste because they, basically just have to work for anyone. Um, so you probably are, you probably want them to be very basic and just nice looking, but just basic and they could appeal to literally anyone. So I feel like that's what these kitchen sets or this kitchen set from the Home Chef Hustle kit kind of does. So that's why I decided to go for this one also because it looks, well, like I said, basic, but pretty and also very modern, which is definitely what I wanted. Um, so that's what I did. But here on the uh, ground floor apartment, I was definitely thinking that the same living here. So the landlord, they enjoy their luxury. They really enjoy their hotel, chic, luxurious, modern vibes and also dark colors. Um, and they also really embrace the traditional or um, original like tiles that are still here. So I was definitely thinking that these tiles that you can see in the kitchen, the floor tiles and also the wall tiles for the accent wall 
are original to the place, but they just probably um, really polished them up and renovated them. But there's definitely some snippets of like the traditional floors and um, tiled walls in this apartment as well. So I thought that that was a fun little detail to embrace. And this is the only apartment that actually still has the traditional tiles um, in it. The other apartments don't have that. So I thought that that was a cute um, little detail for this, uh, for this ground floor apartment as well. But here you can see we have the black kitchen. I was really enjoying the dark vibes for this apartment. It's almost the kitchen almost is like kind of like a dark academia type vibe, but make it modern and make it luxurious, basically. So that's kind of what I tried to do. And then here in the bedroom, I really embraced the brown and blue. So we have this uh, this blue base game wallpaper that I still really love. I'm obsessed with this recently newly added swatch that they gave us. I think it's so pretty. And then I use a lot of the items from the Modern Luxe kit in this um, in this apartment as well. So I really embraced that luxurious hotel type style for this bedroom. I thought that that was perfect for the sim living here. It was exactly what I imagined them being into when it comes to style and, um, you know, just vibes for for their, um, their bedroom space or just like apartment in general. So their bedroom is pretty nice. This apartment, um, this ground floor apartment has two bedrooms, but I was imagining this sim living here by themselves. So I turned the second bedroom into a, um, a guest bedroom and also study or office space because they probably do need an office space to get all their work done to um, plan out all their um, renovation jobs and purchase their next uh, their next house flip projects, like stuff like that. So they basically do need a home office. So I gave them that and then they have um, a double bed in the extra bedroom as well. So maybe they have a friend or sibling or other family member that likes to come over and stay over um, from time to time. So they have a bedroom for that as well. And the second bedroom is actually really big as well. So it's a really, it's a really nice spacious apartment. This one, I feel like this one would be pretty expensive to rent. I feel like at some point they will rent this one out as well, because I'm definitely not thinking like, I wasn't thinking that this would be the permanent living situation for the landlord. But for now, because this was such an expensive project for them to work on. It would make the most sense for them to move in to the place um, themselves for the time being. But obviously until the next apartment or the next project comes along, um, maybe the, I feel like this person really enjoys moving as well. Just like moving into different spaces and decorating it and renovating it. I feel like they really enjoy that. Um, so that's something I was, um, I was definitely thinking. So yeah, they live here alone, but this apartment definitely has a lot of space. So you can easily turn this into a family apartment if you wanted to. The second bedroom could be very easily um, shared between kids or teenagers, or maybe you could have like four friends or four roommates moving into this apartment because you could easily turn both of these big bedrooms into shared bedrooms. Um, and then for this uh, this apartment's bathroom, I actually ch uh, changed the color of the plumbing. I used the same stuff like the same furniture basically in the bathroom as I did for the other apartments. But since the actual landlord is living here, they probably went ahead and picked slightly different colors for the hardware and stuff for this apartment because, well, they enjoy it and they're living in it. And um, they also maybe just wanted the place downstairs to look more luxurious and stand out from the other apartments. Also maybe to mark up the price a little bit once they do rent it out. So that is something that I was thinking. Um, but we have moved on to the second floor. So this apartment is a lot smaller. This is one of the studio apartments that I was talking about. And it's technically not a studio apartment because it does have a separate bedroom and that goes for the other apartment as well. But it's still, it's so small that it feels like a studio apartment to me. And I was definitely thinking there would be one sim living here. For the kitchen in this studio apartment, I also um, did not place an oven. I just gave them a stove. I thought that would be realistic. Also, this apartment is going to be a lot cheaper and maybe also more catered towards students, like university students maybe. So um, to like make the rent price a little bit cheaper, there is no oven in this apartment, just a stove. Uh, I thought that would make sense in here as well. And I actually really like the floor plan for this one. 
It's very small and cramped, but this tiny little sectional sofa works so well in here. I feel like it's so cute. They have the tiniest entryway space in a really small kitchen. Um, unfortunately, I did not have the space for a dining table in this, in this tiny little apartment, so they have no dining table, but they do have a nice seating area here, like a nice living room space, and um, they also have a desk. The bedroom for this apartment is actually pretty spacious compared to basically the the entire place. When you look at it as a whole, it feels like the bedroom is pretty big. Um, but that actually makes sense because I did want there to be a nice study space in here as well, especially if this is, um, you know, supposed to be catered towards students. It would be nice for them to have a nice bedroom, study space, and then a separate living room kitchen space to kind of have your work slash living space like be separated in that way. I felt like that was um, a nice little touch. But then here for the color scheme in this one, I went for a lot of soft pinks, I guess you could call it here in the kitchen. And then I combined it with um, a lot of white and neutrals. And then there is some touches of green throughout this apartment as well. You can see that I use this really light sage green um, tile for a backsplash in the kitchen as well. I thought that brought in some color. And then they have the tiniest entryway space, which I thought was so adorable. I don't think I furnished the um, bathrooms for the other apartments on camera. Maybe I did it for a couple of them, but definitely not for all of them because that's a little bit repetitive but maybe I did it for this apartment. I'm not exactly sure. Um, but here you can see we have the bedroom. So I placed the bed against the wall because I was definitely imagining this space to be for one single sim living here. So I thought it would make sense to have the bed pushed against the wall to save some space. Um, and then there is a, um, a nice area for a desk in here as well. So I gave them a nice study space in here. And this place is very modern. I was trying to make it look Ikea-ish. So I used a bunch of, well, not a bunch of, but I did use some dream home decorator items because I feel like that looks kind of Ikea-ish and that was exactly what I was going for. Uh, and yeah, this, this bedroom space is actually really, really neutral. This person didn't really bother painting the walls or anything. Um, so the walls are just white, um, apart from the backsplash in the kitchen, of course, which is, um, that nice light sage green tile. So that brings in some color, but for the rest are like, you know what, these white walls, it's fine by me. <laughs> Let's just keep them white. So I don't have to, um, bother repainting them when I move out of the space and like paint them back to white. So you can just kind of leave them leave them the way they are. And um, it would save them money, of course, as well, which I thought was a big, um, like was very important for the person living in this room. So yeah, this bedroom is very basic, but the study space is nice and cluttered. I kind of forgot that I wanted to t tone it down a notch with the clutter in this room. So the desk is very much um, cluttered. I kind of, um, I don't know, I forgot that I had planned on not putting as much clutter in the space. So for this, uh, for this, um, study space, there is a little bit of clutter on the desk, but I think that's okay. And then I placed a cute fuzzy rug and, oh, I actually did end up recording the bathroom for this one. This is only a four tile bathroom, so it's really, really small, but I did manage to make it work. We have a shower in here and then a sink and a toilet, of course. No tub that was not gonna fit at all, but I feel like this four tile bathroom setup works really well for a small space like this. Uh, so that's what I ended up going for. It's really cramped, but it makes sense. And then here on the second floor, this is the second apartment on the second floor. And this one is um, furnished for a young couple and a toddler. And I was definitely imagining that they just recently moved into this place. It is, um, well, obviously everyone living here recently moved in because the building itself like was just recently renovated. So I feel like these apartments have not been up for rent for that long. So every person living in this space is the first tenant, which is really nice. Like imagine moving into a place where you're the first tenant. That is really nice. That happened to me once and it is so nice to have everything new and shiny and it might not be like the most luxurious, but like it's it's nice. Like everything is new. You're the first person to use everything and that is just such a nice feeling. So I feel like these, uh, these people living here are pretty lucky in that sense. So this is a two bedroom space. And again, I went for a lot of neutrals. Um, but some more like darker neutrals compared to the previous studio space. So this one has some darker neutrals and I did add in some touches of color as well. You can see that I used 
this uh, rug, which is from Horse Ranch, I believe. I really like this color. Like these colors in the rug are so pretty and it definitely brings in some color and makes it look a little bit more um, family friendly, I guess, in a way as well. Uh, a little bit more like playful, I guess. That's the word I'm looking for. So this family has a toddler. So I was definitely imagining this place to be a bit more cluttered. Once again, I was really trying to keep an eye on the amount of stuff that I placed. But since these people have a toddler, I thought it would be realistic to clutter up the space a little bit more. So there's definitely some toys in the living room and, um, you know, just some more like knickknacks scattered around the place. And I also put in a high chair to kind of um, tell the story of these people having a, a young child or a toddler. It could also be an infant, but I do think I placed a toddler bed as opposed to an infant bed. So, but you could obviously very easily swap that out, even if you wanna use this, um, this unit for a couple without a child, you could very easily turn the room into a study space or maybe they have a teenager or a child it's just it's very easy obviously to just redecorate the second bedroom and get rid maybe of the toys in the living room space um but for the rest i feel like this apartment would turn out really cute for the backsplash in here i actually use the tiles that came with the home chef hustle pack because the colors are perfect they really really matched the paint that i'm that i was using in the rest of the apartment so i thought that was really nice and um yeah i don't know overall there are definitely some splashes of color but not necessarily on the walls the splashes of color are more so in the rug and then the painting in the dining room space like that sort of a thing they didn't necessarily go over the the um wall paint with like bright colors um, the bedroom in this apartment is pretty small, but it definitely works. There is no like fancy built in closet for this one or anything. They just have a small dresser set up um, and they also have a little balcony. A couple of these apartments actually have their own balconies. And for the ground floor apartment, it's off of the kitchen. For this apartment, it's off of the bedroom. And I think for the apartment upstairs, it's also off of the bedroom. So um, they have small little balconies off the bedroom. Originally, I really wanted to create floor plans where the balconies would be off of the kitchen or living room space, but it just didn't really make sense for the floor plan. It was just a, it was just a, a hassle for me to make that work. And it was just very, messy and it just didn't really want to work with me so i decided you know what let's have small balconies off of the bedrooms i think that um that actually makes a lot of sense as well i actually once lived in a place where i had a balcony off of the bedroom as well and it was actually really nice i don't know it was great placement so i was like you know what let's do that for these bedrooms as well but then here we have the toddler's room and the toddler's room is um this nice green color and then i combined it with pink and blue so I feel like this um, this green wall paint is so forgiving. It looks so good with so many different colors combined. So for this toddler's room, it's a toddler. They probably like colorful, colorful things. So I decided to combine it with um, light pink and also light blue. And I just feel like this toddler's bedroom is so, so cute. But here we have the small balcony. The balconies, when I say small balcony, they're really small. They're very, very small. You can basically just fit two chairs on there and that's literally it. Maybe if you want your Sims to do some gardening or something, you could put a small um, gardening box, planter box, or a chess table that would probably also fit. But we do um, also have community planter boxes in the shared community space, like outside the backyard. Basically, we have some uh, some gardening boxes there too. So you can do some gardening there as well if you wanted to. But then this is the apartment that has the filler furniture. Um, so the kitchen and stuff obviously is not filler. The kitchen is just what comes with the apartment. And, um, but for the rest of the furniture is basically filler furniture. So I tried to make it look as basic as possible, but still cute to give the potential tenant an idea of what it could look like. And like I said, also, maybe they can rent the space with the filler furniture in it if they wanted to. And then that one was obviously uh, very quick. And then we're moving on to the last, the last, um, apartment of this building. And this is another studio space apartment. And I was ready for something different for this one, as you can probably tell already, because I had been playing around with neutrals for basically three apartments in a row. Uh, the ground floor apartment is a little bit less neutral, but then the other three are very, very neutral. 
So for this one, I was ready to um, to mix it up a little bit. So I decided to go for mid-century to a T in this one, like mid-century, but make it now, like make it 2023, but also very bright colors. So I'm actually obsessed with this paint, this color that I'm using on the wall. I think it's base game, but I feel like this color is so pretty. It might also it might also be my reshade that makes it look this good, but I feel like this is such a unique, pretty color, and it combines really nicely with this blue couch and chair that I'm using in the living room. The couch and chair are from the Paranormal Stuff Pack, and very mid-century or very 70s, I feel like. I thought that was um, that was such a perfect color for this apartment, so that's what I went with. And I also went with this brown swatch of the kitchen set. And this is my favorite swatch of this kitchen set. This is so beautiful. I feel like the warm brown tones are so, so good. So I was actually very excited about using this swatch in this very last apartment. And then combined with that blue tile, for the backsplash, how pretty does that look? I don't know, I'm just, I'm obsessed with this, with this color combination. I feel like it's not something that everyone would like, but it's definitely something I would like, even in real life. In The Sims, it's fun because it's cute and cartoony, but even in real life, I feel like that color combination is definitely something I could go for in, in real life, just for my real life house as well, which is out there, but I really like it. And then here we have another um, one Sim, bedroom basically. I mean it has a double bed but again it's against the wall so I was definitely imagining one sim living in this space and they have a very uh, loud leopard print rug in there which I thought was so fun. I don't think I've ever used that swatch of the rug before and then they also have their bathroom of course that I made a little bit more colorful. This sim loves their colorful furniture items and their colorful decorations so I went crazy in that little apartment. And then here, last but not least, we have the basement and the basement I turned into a gym with some lockers, which is such a nice and functional use of the space, I feel like. Um, but that is pretty much going to be it for this apartment complex. So let's jump into the game and I'll give you a tour of the complex in real time. So here we have the apartment complex in the game. By the way, there is also an unfurnished version of this on the gallery. It also doesn't have the floor plans for the units done, just the hallways and the staircase. So if you're interested in that, that is also on the gallery. But this is obviously the fully furnished version. So we have the front door area and around the back here we have the backyard. I did change this up a little bit off camera because I felt bad that there was no um, play equipment for children. Even though currently we don't have any kids living here, just a toddler, I thought it would be nice to have at least some sort of play equipment for kids. So we have that here. And then in the back here, we have the pool and also the loungers, the barbecue grill area. There is a dumpster back here and then the community garden situation. Just very cute and cozy. And then the ground floor luxurious apartment has their own back door into the yard and this door just leads into the laundry area and over here on the side we have some bikes parked and then let's just go inside so I can give you an overview of the floor plan. So this right here is the ground floor. We have obviously we have the hallway here. I did place five different mailboxes for each of the units. This obviously isn't functional this way. I did also put a mailbox here on the outside of the building. But when the pack comes out, I do believe there is supposed to be like some sort of a mailbox unit that maybe you can put that over here. I don't really know yet. We also have some vending machines out here and then over here is the small laundry space. So this is just a very basic laundry space area with a door leading to the backyard. And then we also have a staircase going down into the basement. The basement is only very small. You can obviously expand this if you want to, but we we do have a gym in here, which I thought was a nice use of the space. But then going back up, this is the large luxurious apartment. So they have an entryway space over here that basically leads into the kitchen, dining and living room. This is their gorgeous living room space. I love how the sunlight is hitting um, hitting this, uh, this room at the moment. They have a fireplace in here that I was thinking could still be the traditional fireplace, just updated. They have a framed TV in here and then a nice 
kitchen, of course, and then they have a very small hallway leading into the main bedroom over here. This one's very blue and brown. I'm loving the color scheme in here. They have built-in storage over here. And then the second bedroom slash office space is over here on this side. So they have a nice desk set up here. And this is where we have the, uh, the back door as well. And then of course the bathroom, which is very basic, but it does feel pretty nice and luxurious as well. Then the second floor has the tiniest landing. You could go ahead and give these people their own laundry as well, because we do have a four tile storage unit in here, but you can easily swap that out for either laundry or whatever you want it to be. Then over here is the two bedroom family apartment. So this also has a open floor plan situation with a small kitchen. It's actually a really small kitchen, but it is functional. So that's good. And then they have their, um, their living room space and also their dining. This apartment is definitely a little bit more on the cramped side, but I really enjoy that about it. Over here by the kitchen is their bathroom. They have a window in the bathroom, which is actually kind of nice. And then this bathroom is a little bit bigger as well because um, they have a shower top combo. And I also put a potty for a toddler in here. Then there is a hallway over here with nice book storage and the parents' bedroom over here. So nice and neutral, pretty cramped, but it is all functional. They have these nice glass doors leading onto the small balcony. And then over here is the toddler's bedroom. The toddler has built in storage because I thought it was a nice space filler and it's nice to have in an apartment like this. So they have built in storage and then their play and sleep area over here. And then there's also this smaller unit on the second floor. And this is the student's studio space basically. So they have a very small kitchen, but I really like the layout for this apartment, the tiniest entryway space, and then a really small living room space, no dining table because there's no space for it. And then a bedroom in here, which is very nice and neutral. And they have a study space or desk set up over here as well. And just a tiny four tile bathroom, of course. And then moving on to the third floor over here, these people have a slightly bigger landing space because this is just how it made the most sense. And also again, some laundry, which is really nice. Some washers and dryers. This is the apartment that is just filled with filler furniture. So there is no tenant for this one yet. It's kind of small. It is a one bedroom apartment. And I really like how this one came out. I'm loving the color scheme for the kitchen combined with this wallpaper. I feel like that just looks so nice and soft, but you can definitely tell that this is not, um, it has no tenants right now. There's no stuff in the kitchen. Um, there is a small dining table with probably a fake laptop and then also a living room space with probably a fake TV. That's what I was thinking. Kind of like those Ikea setups, you know, how they use these fake TVs and laptops that don't work. That's what I was imagining. Um, they have their bedroom over here, which is also very nice and basic. And then a small balcony, of course. And then there's a bathroom in here, which is also again, slightly bigger. So they do have a shower tub combo, which is nice. A great starter apartment. That's what I was imagining. And then we have this very loud studio apartment over here on this side, which is definitely a very mid century. I'm loving this wallpaper. I think it's so pretty. So there's definitely someone living in this one and they have a pretty nice kitchen space here with some island seats as well. So they don't really need a dining table in here, which is great. I was thinking that this person could be into baking for some reason. I don't know why, but I just like the mixer set up here. So that's what I did. And then there is a bedroom through here, which is really, really crammed and um, pretty loud color scheme wise, but I really like it. And then they have an ensuite bathroom over here with a shower top combo. And um, I just added some colorful personal items in here as well. But that is basically it for this apartment complex. So this complex is up on the gallery. It comes in at just under 240,000 simoleons but I mean, it's basically five houses in one. I have no idea how this pricing is going to work when you can actually turn it into separate units, but I guess we'll have to wait and see until the pack comes out. I built it on a 30 by 20 in the world of San Sequoia on the lot where the library is located by default. So if you want to place it in your game, then that is where it goes. And then there is also an unfurnished version of this building on the gallery. So this one has no floor plans done for the apartments, just the hallway and the staircases. It also doesn't have a basement because I added that later on. But yeah, if you want to download this complex unfurnished and make it your own, then you can definitely do that as well. But that's going to do it for today's video. So I really hope that you enjoyed this one. You can obviously go ahead and download it off the gallery. Like I just showed you, my username on the gallery is Simmery Sims. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok 
if you'd like. My username on there is Simmery Sims as well. If you're not subscribed to my channel already, feel free to do so. And if you want to be notified of every single time I upload a video, just click that little bell icon and you should be fine. I also live stream over on Twitch a few times a week. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and give me a follow over on twitch.tv forward slash Simmery Sims. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Bye.